Hey guys, this is Matt Granger, that Nikon guy for mattgranger.com. Sadly, my trip in Chung Chow is pretty much over. Um, I've really enjoyed my time. And I wanted to go through and show you what's in my bags and what I actually used. I think it's a really worthwhile point at the end of your trip when you know normally you just get home, unpack everything and back up all your cards to actually go through and have a think about um, what you used, when you used it, how often you used it and whether or not you really needed to bring it along in the first place because when you're traveling extra weight as well as with cabbage restrictions is a pain but it's all the stuff that you have to carry with you so if there's stuff that you're bringing and you're not using don't bring it um, if you use software like Aperture or Lightroom you can go through and filter by camera or lens type and then actually have a look at how many images you took with each one you may be able to narrow down the field so for instance for me there's some things I brought this trip which indispensable love them um, first time I'm using them but just A1 I'll be bringing them on every trip and there's other things that I know I didn't use too much so okay first of all I'll start with it because it's on the outside is the Gitzo Traveler tripod when I introduced this one got a lot of feedback about how expensive it is it is a super expensive premium traveler tripod but my god I won't travel with anything else anymore for the compression ratio it gives you and the weight versus rigidity and stability I've never used and I mean that literally I've never used anything that compares to this it's phenomenal it's my favorite tripod next up the mini B bag I'm starting with the stuff that I'm really happy with um, perfect for this kind of trip it's really lightweight it took enough stuff this was the only bag that I ever took out with me on hikes foot for the tripod I actually left the top connector at home so I just bodged this one up but still it worked just fine lots of pouches and compartments and the thing that I love the best apart from having uh, good padded straps stomach strap and a chest strap is that this section which lifts the bag off your back so at the end of the day I had a um, uh, still got a sweaty back because you've still got contact but it didn't hold the heat there so you never felt like you had this backpack burning a hole in your back and as soon as you took it off the heat dissipated from your shirt and there was no stored heat in here either because it's just a mesh you know it, it, it wasn't holding the heat basically it wasn't building up so let's have a look through what's inside okay in here I just carried spare batteries and yes I use spare batteries for everything on the D5100, my wireless mice, which use 9 volt batteries, uh, the Flash and the D3S, all of them ran out of battery whilst I was shooting, and all of them I had spare batteries with me. So that's one I would say, yes, always carry spare batteries, even if you think you're only doing short trips, you forget to charge it one night, or the charger doesn't turn on when you put it on before you go to bed, you get up, put the battery in, and it dies, you want to have a spare charged one in your bag. Next up, memory cards. I couldn't even tell you how many uh, gig of photos I took this trip. When you throw in videos, it's got to be heaps. I'll throw a little number up on the screen to let you know. Filters, I did use a variety of different filters, mainly uh, the circular polarizers. I had a bunch of UV filters as well that I just used to do uh, introductions. The Pixel remote cord. Yep, I did use this on each of the sunset shoots on the D3S. It's basic, cheapest chips, but it did just what I needed it to do. And business cards. I did actually use these here. Um, when I'd stop and get chatting to someone and I'd ask what I was doing here, I'd give them my card as well. Um, opening up the main compartment. Oh, on the side. Wet weather, wet weather hood for the bag. I didn't use it. Thankfully, we had glorious weather all weekend, but I would still, you know, that weighs next to nothing, I'd bring it. If I had have gotten, you know, trapped an hour walk from the, the village and it was pouring, I want to be able to cover my gear. Okay. Now, the Tamron 70-300. I brought this instead of the Nikon 70-200. Um, it's an FX lens and the VR is phenomenal. It's, it's really, really impressive. 
I have to say I didn't use it that much. Um, I did get some cracker shots with it of the spider and a few other ones. Let me throw up a few photos I took with it. Okay, but overall I probably used the 18 to 270 more just because I was using, and not that the 18 to 270 is better optically than this. This is actually a bit faster and a bit longer. Um, but I tended to have uh, the macro lens or one of my full frame, other full frame lenses um, on the D3S. And then I'd have the 18 to 270 on the D5100 anyway. So then if I needed the extra range for something quickly, like some birds flying overhead or something, than I had it there with the 18 270. But this is a great lens. Um, but yeah, I, to be honest, I probably could have saved the weight on this one because I had the 18 270. If I didn't have the 18 270, this would have been used a lot more. The 60 mil macro, I'm in love. I, um, I've never been into macro photography, but I quite love it. And I know I'm doing it the idiot's way. Um, one, you should either be using a tripod or using longer exposures or uh, i'm sure there's loads of technique to it that i haven't got my head around i was hand holding it all um you know where half a millimeter of movement in my hands was throwing things in and out of focus so it was a lot of hit and miss but i really enjoyed shooting with it and it is nice and sharp and 90 mil is what it works out to whatever camera you're using it on um, it's pretty good length for portraits as well and nice and light compact f2 but when you're up nice and close it'll let you stop down all the way to f45 um, as i said i'm not a macro expert i don't know all of the other macro lenses out there on the market but i really really use this one a lot let me show you the photo some of my favorite photos i took with that one this weekend Okay, next up, my other baby, the 85 1.4. Gotta be honest, I didn't use this very much. I used it to do some lens comparison tests and a little bit here and there, but for something valuable, fragile, and heavy, I could have left this one behind. For this trip, I mean, I couldn't, I definitely used it on the trip to Hong Kong overall, but here in Cheung Chow, I didn't use it very much. Okay, opening up the the rest of the gear oh well whilst i've got it on the d5100 that i'm filming on use it all the time that's what i use for my video it's on the gorilla pod focus use that fairly regularly any time that it wasn't on the gitso it was on the gorilla pod that's also got the 10 to 24 from tamron on it i use that quite a bit um obviously for really wide angle stuff and that's something that reminds me as well as doing this kind of stock take to see what you need to take on trips, have a real think about what you shoot before you go out and buy gear. So often I get emails from people saying, you know, I've just bought this fancy camera and these fancy lenses, but I need to have an ultra wide. I know it's important to have an ultra wide. Which one should I get out of these ones? Why is it important to have an ultra wide? What do you shoot? Like a lot of these people I ask, so what are you shooting? And they say, well, I shoot mainly portraits and events. Well, what do you need an ultra wide for? Think about what you're shooting and buy gear to fit the needs of what you're shooting. Don't just buy it because that's what a, you know, a cohesive lineup of gear looks like. It's ridiculous and such a waste of money. So the 10 to 24, I did use it. It's really handy when I'm doing videos close to hand. I also use it for some landscapes. Um, Here's some of the photos I took with that. Okay, moving on. The D3S, used it all the time, every day, couldn't do without it. The 24 to 70, I didn't use it that much. I did use it quite a bit though, and for doing landscapes on the D3S, I used it quite a bit because it's, um, you know, for it's the widest FX frame lens that I have here. 
Here's some shots that I took with that combo. Okay, the SB900 flash, I used it to run some tests and I also used it for fill flash and to light up our friend that scary spider. You can see the video for that one there. Okay, the 18-270, to 270, uh, this is variable aperture DX lens, 3.5 to 6.3, extends a long way when zooming, it suffers zoom creep, you need to lock it in place so it doesn't drop out but it's fantastic, fantastic travel lens. It's so light, optically good. It focuses like impressively fast, not the fastest out there. It's not gonna focus as fast as my 24 to 70, but for its price point, it focuses really, really well. And the VC on this and the 70 to 300, but the VC on this is phenomenal. It's just great. You just really feel it grab. Um, use this a lot such a range on it and the image quality and sharpness are fine they're good um, yeah glad I brought that one uh, let me show you a couple of photos I took with that one mil prime didn't shoot a lot with this to be honest um, because I was going out to do videos and reviews of different things I often had specific gear on for a purpose um, and then when this one is 51.4 but I had the 62 um, but it also did macro I generally throw that one on when I was going to dinner I could still do street shots with it at f2 and 60 mil but then if I wanted to, you know, get a shot a macro of a flower or of my dinner or something, then the 60 was more handy. But I use this a lot in the portraits I've done on the trip beyond Cheung Chow, so probably could have done without having it here. Okay, and then the Nikon FE with the 51.8D. I love this camera, but I have to be honest, I didn't shoot a hell of a lot with it, and it's for the same reason as the 50mm. I came here um, as well as to relax, but to do specific videos and reviews for the channel, and uh, film just didn't come into it a hell of a lot. I was using the 5100 and the D3S a lot. I use this for a couple of shots, but really not terribly much. Um, but and I haven't actually used it that much on my whole trip so far so I'll need to get this out more but yes to be honest I could have left this one back in Hong Kong as well a little bit more weight that probably didn't need to be here and lucky last is the low pro pro roller this bag that I brought my stuff along in I didn't take this out of the hotel to be honest other than getting my stuff here and back but for that purpose nice and compact good padding on everything um, it does wheel really well on the rest of the trip I've used its stacks on this trip yes I needed <coughs> excuse me I needed to bring it because I needed more than would fit in the the mini B by itself so I had this then I worked out of this in the hotel room to pack what I wanted for the mini B each day and then this one conveniently fits down into my suitcase as is so you can see the video where i introduced everything i brought along there so that's a little recap of what i brought along with me i also had my uh, macbook pro loads of hard drives chargers phones and all of those got used several times a day so couldn't have done without those um yeah so there we go that's a little recap for you so think about what you generally shoot what you've shot in the past what you're looking to shoot what you're looking to learn and practice with and then take along gear specific to that. You may regret having not brought something along um, where there was a couple of shots that it could have been really handy, but you may also regret carrying along three lenses and a bunch of gear that you're just not gonna use or that you're gonna take five photos with for the sake of carrying 10 kilos with you. Have a think about it. 
Thanks for watching guys and thanks for coming along on this trip with me. It's been fantastic. You can click the link that's on screen now and there's a playlist of all the videos I've made in my time here in Cheung Chow. And I'll check in with you soon. Thanks for watching guys. Matt Granger, that Nikon guy for mattgranger.com.